the Bible talks about Samson being the strongest man in the Bible. Yeah. That was incorrect. Delilah was. Mm. Did she beat him up? No. She gave him some coochie and she cut his head. <laughs> That's all. Right? So, yeah. So again, like when 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 we can get back to the essence of who we are as people, and women understand it's about persuasion. Yeah. It's about seduction. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. Do you believe in monogamy? Cause you don't seem like it, based on your responses. Yes. Can men be faithful? Yes. Let me get her answer. Um, do I believe in monogamy? Yes. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's um, very effective for child rearing. Um, I think you can make an argument that polygamy is effective as well or less effective, more effective. I think that's a conversation. But I do believe in monogamy. Can men be faithful? Yes. There's a caveat here. After he's grown up. Okay. Um, you know, and coming to America where he was like, you got to sow your royal oats. Mm -hmm. That's some real shit. You feel I'm like that's necessary. I'm going to be completely honest. That's some real shit. Like the reason why a lot of dudes have that midlife crisis is because they weren't able to be young. Mm -hmm. They weren't able to be young men and go out here and risk their life, whatever the fuck. Um, so, you know, when it comes to like stages in life, I think that's a necessary stage. Um, and what's complicated again for men is that Typically, as men get older, we get more desirable, mm -hmm. right? We get more money, more status. We get this distinguished look. Our beard starts to connect. Yeah. You know, some women even like gray hairs and shit. Yeah. So it's like I'm becoming sexier mm -hmm. to the dating market. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me I got to lock away the juice. I just, I just got the juice. You done had this shit since you were 14, right? So for a lot of women, the juice isn't valuable because every time... I've been going to the gas station since 13 and niggas have always been googly eyed at me versus nigga. I just started at 35 <laughs> years old. I'm just now getting women in my yeah. dreams, you know, so but if you're a man who's like you've experienced it, you know, what I'm saying you've been there, done that. It doesn't really phase you. I think then, you know, uh, monogamy is uh, is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, like I said before, men want to be faithful. We want you to. You believe that inherently that's Absolutely. what they want. Okay. I think, I think, but the separation is, <laughs> R. Kelly, my mind is telling me that. <laughs> but my yeah. I think this the separation, like our yeah. minds and our, our, our hormones and stuff are in, in like conflict. But okay. men want to do the right thing. I think there are steps though along that way. But yeah, I believe in monogamy. Okay. Okay. Are you surprised by that answer? A little bit. Some of your other answers, it seemed like, well, there's these ones. It's not a one. It's like, I'm compatible with a lot of people. Like, it did kind of give a polygamy, polyamory uh, desire there a little bit. But, um, you know, I take you for your word. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and, and that's the thing. I've even done panels. Like, I, I, I think polygamy is a worthwhile conversation. Really? Whether or not polygamy is for me is a separate thing. Okay. But I think it's a worthwhile conversation because <laughs> going back to the same girl from Grapevine, she said that a polygamous society actually benefits women and a monogamous society benefits men. Here's why. Women are hypergamous. Whether we like it or not, it's something that we can't change. Women are biologically predisposed because you have a finite number of potential people you can make. Mm -hmm. You're biologically predisposed to find the best possible male of your species to give those eggs to and to procreate. Mm -hmm. With that being said, of course, women are going to be choosy. I'm risking right. my life to clone you. Right. Of course, I'm going to be choosy. Exactly. So she was saying in a polygamous society... You and you and you and you can all choose LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Or you and you and you and you can choose Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can scratch that itch of getting the best possible man you can get versus 
in a in a monogamous society, oh, Elon is gone, so I have to go down a little bit. Uh huh. So even the plumber, now plumbers make good money. Even the the garbage guy, yeah. garbage guys make good money. But just <laughs> this is what the second is the right? janitor. The janitor. Yeah. He's yeah. gonna get. He's kind of guaranteed a woman. Right, because they're more, you know, eligible women yeah, biologically. Yeah, you pairing them off, and you see somebody's going to be left for him. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, from a societal standpoint, from a black community standpoint, um, I think you could make a, a argument for. All right, we need to replicate our nuclear physicists <laughs> and, and our, our, you know, uh, contributing members and intellects and things like that. Um, but I think that is. Um, I don't know if we can go back to that because I know we're people who come from polygamy, but I don't know if like in a modern era we can actually go back to that. But I'm not as dismissive of it as most people. OK, here's a question. What do you think women can do to make men commit quicker? Because we all know what Kevin Samuels was saying about yeah. men know in, you know, in six months and you shouldn't be waiting longer than X amount of time and all this. And I believe it. I believe men do know very quickly, quicker than six months for sure. I think men know rather quickly if they what their intentions are, what they want, what their end goal is with women. But that doesn't mean that they act on it when they know. Because, again, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's the, at the foundation of understanding it is understanding it's about him. Mm-hmm. Is he who he wants to be? Is he ready to be a husband? Is he ready to be a father? Right. And I know, obviously, I'm a testament to that. Some of those things happen when you're not necessarily ready. Yeah. But um, yeah. you could be a wonderful woman, but if he's not ready, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So then your advice, if this was your daughter, you would tell her to do what in that situation? <sighs> so number one, right? Um, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. Women already like a man who can teach them something. Right. Um, but you're going to have to date above your age, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm not a fan of significant age gaps. Like my parents are like 12 years apart. I oh, thought, are they? I thought that shit was weird as fuck. <laughs> but, so I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all, all of that. But I think there are some 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 men who are going to be relatively quick and eager to marry. Typically, those aren't the men women want. Mm. For the men that women want, either you have to get them after they've created the version of themselves that they're happy with, like right after. Yeah. Or sometimes you can luck out and be such an asset to him that, yo, he's like, I don't I can't lose her. You see what I'm saying? But typically, and I'm like in that age range, Mm -hmm. but typically. You're just about ready if the right one come. Well, the right (laughs) one. And you just pick from the ones. I got a couple years. (laughs) I got a couple years. But, um, you know, but but typically um, it's about the dude. Uh Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It's about the dude and what he's ready for. but again, I, I don't want to seem like I'm minimizing women's power. But this whole turning future into Russell Wilson shit, we better try to yeah. do That's not going to work. No, like, you still have to have the right raw materials. Yeah. Yeah. Although I will say, I've always believed that for certain... I do, I do believe certain women have the ability to shift men's behavior if it's the right... Like, I don't know, I think it's, if, if there's, when you think about it like a chemistry experiment or something, the right chemicals, the right elements, I think together, like the right man, and I think there is a woman that can change every man. I think there is a woman that has the ability to do that for every man that is acting what out. What do you mean by change? Like bring out the best version of him. I think there is a woman, because we, I, I feel like we've all seen it where, he was out playing around and this, that, and the third, and then he came across her, and then his whole life shifted, and he. I, I can I can agree with that, but the only reason why I won't, or I won't like put it on a megaphone, is that 
that is an anomaly. Exactly. Right. So, well, it, but a lot of us like to latch on to an anomaly. I agree with that. And think that we are that woman. I agree. Mostly, ninety nine percent of y'all watch. Exactly. That, we're not that I think there may be a man that you are capable of bringing that out of, but is that the one that you're trying to bring that out of? Probably right. not. But I think most, especially you talk to, I think, I would say a good portion of married men, they would say that their wife has brought out a better version of them or she has done this, that, and the third. So I don't think that's a far-fetched idea that that's what happens when you meet someone that is a good fit for you, that a better version of you comes out. I would take that with a grain of salt because this... And this is to our credit, our generation's credit. This environment that we're navigating is unique to anything mm -hmm. that the Gen Xers or the fucking baby boomers have ever had to deal with. Mm -hmm. We've had, we have more options than they've ever yeah. had. You know, he, yeah. your, girl, your uncle had the baddest bitch in the town. Right. I gotta, you gotta compete with the baddest bitches all over the world right. on Instagram, right? So it's, it's a different, and I think because of that, there were things that were able to work back then. Mm -hmm. And motherfuckers get married at 20 and shit like that. I feel like I'm 20 now and I'm 29. Right? You see what I'm saying? Like adolescence is yeah. so much longer. Motherfuckers don't feel grown until later on in life. So it, it's a different, it's a different landscape that we're trying to navigate. So I, I don't know if all the advice of some of our elders is valid right now. Cause this shit is different. No, I agree with that. I do agree with that. But I do think. And I think it's with any, any relationship. I think even friendships, your friends, good friends bring out better versions of you. I sure. think when you're paired with people that are a good fit for you, it does manifest and create a better version of you because you want to do better. And when you're in connection with good people, you just want to be better. I feel like, and then you just, you get a, like a, a surge of inspiration or something to just be better. Sure, but there should be a value added to, to the other person too. I think most relationships that are healthy are also reciprocal. Exactly. But, yeah. but if, you, if you're if if people go in saying because I think at its unhealthiest, that's where the uh, rehabilitation mindset comes mm -hmm. from. You know because. Yes, he might not be everything that I want, but I know that he can be, but he's doing all this for me and he's benefiting me in these ways. I'm learning from him. I'm growing with him and the whole nine. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but for some people, that's not the case. It's just Most I'm, people. I'm coming in with, with my gloves and yeah. my tools and I'm going to fix this nigga. And I'm taking care of him and I'm his second mom and whatever else. So it, from not. that perspective, you can't raise right. a man. You can't build a man. You can like nudge him two inches yeah. this way or yeah. two inches that way. But this whole, oh, he was this and I turned him in. Nah. I just don't think that's even a worthwhile um, plight. Pursuit. Like just don't even try. Because I, I, I just think... Then you end up in a situation where you're just you're pour, you've poured so much and then you're bitter if it Resentful, doesn't work out. Yeah. yeah, like I feel like I, I used to say this: you have to calculate your risks. So if you're not going to be okay with worst case scenario, like just don't even do that because worst case scenario sometimes is I loved him and I poured this into him. And then he was this great man that I wanted, but he was that for someone else. Mm. And there are some cases where you might love someone enough to want the best for them, even if it's not you. Mm. But if you don't feel that way, don't do that. Like, don't do that with the intention of like, and he has to be with me in the end. Like he, it exactly. needs to be me. Like exactly. do it because you want him, you love him and you want him to be better. And that sets you apart. Right. That could, because like, what was that Indie Irie song? If he ever left me, I wouldn't even be sad. Oh, I love there's that a blessing song. in every lesson. Yeah. Right? Like a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of us, like, we have that anxious attachment style where like somebody owes us something. Yeah. And because of that, even the ways that we move, people talk about vibes, energies, it's different. Mm -hmm. it, it feels very um, needy. Mm hmm it feels very entitled and manipulative, it, manipulative yeah. right? Versus there's mutual benefit in us being in community and communication and sex, whatever we decide to do. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't work out, you're such a good person that I yeah. wish you the best and that you were a net positive to my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the problem is that 
it's there's unclear again unclear expectations if your expectation is that you're doing these things and he needs to marry you then you need to have like there needs to be a plan for that like not just well I, I, one day he'll see my value and he's gonna choose me i'm all about setting actual deadlines and communicating like I understand that we've been dating for, you know, three months. We need to put a title on it or we need to go our separate ways. And if you're not ready, that's fine. But this is a, a, a boundary that I have. This is an expectation I that. that I have in order to have access to me. I, can I can't that. control you. And that's what sometimes men will say that because it, it makes it seem like it, women feed into it when they say this, like, I don't want to be controlled and I don't want to be forced to do this, that, and that there. I'm not controlling you. I'm controlling me. This is what's required to have access to me. <sighs> this, is, this is why femininity is so powerful. And I think it's, it's, it's underappreciated how powerful it is. And when I tell women you have more control than you realize... Mm -hmm. A lot of women try to compete with men on, on a masculine playing field. Mm -hmm. So, like... Men, it's about domination and force. Yeah. And women try to dominate and force men to do dot, dot, dot versus persuasion and seduction, right? Even like biblically, mm -hmm. the Bible talks about Samson being the strongest man in the Bible. Yeah. That was incorrect. Delilah was. Mm -hmm. Did she beat him up? No. She gave him some coochie and she cut his head. <laughs> That's all, right? So, yeah. So again, like when, when, when we can get back to the essence of who we are as people. And women understand it's about persuasion. Yeah. It's about seduction. So not necessarily like, it's funny, um, there was um, is this dating coach, this white dude, his name's Matthew Hussey. And I think I've heard of him. You have? I think I have. You probably have, he's like Australian. The last name sounds familiar. Yeah, he's yeah. either Australian or British, but um, a woman asked him like, you know, uh, how does he feel about uh, women shooting their shot at dudes? Mm -hmm. And he was like, women have always shot their shot at dudes. Mm -hmm. Like, this shit ain't new. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what do you mean? You, there's never been a time women have been hollering at dudes. She said, he said, no, but there was a time when women would drop the handkerchief. Mm -hmm. You'd walk past a guy, you'd just mistakenly drop your handkerchief and literally leave the ball in his court to come up to you and give you uh, your handkerchief back and say, hey, and spark it. So again... That's not going up to, hey, Shawty, yeah. how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My name is Delilah. You know, it's, it's about the seduction piece. It's about the nuance of it. Um, but again, I think, I don't want to start talking about white supremacy today. But I think part of what happened. Because that one was on your brain. Man, listen. <laughs> I think what happened is our women have been encouraged to be more masculine. And to uh -huh. be more domineering and forceful. And you've, you, you've kind of lost the essence of the seduction and the persuasion. So a lot of women don't know how to drop handkerchiefs. So they think it's all up to the guy. It's more, it's more up to you than you realize. I agree with that. And I think the way that you said um, with men, it's like the domination and like control. I think women's power is in backing up, like removing themselves. So I think even like in the handkerchief um, situation, they dropped it and then they let it go. Like you leave it alone. It's not, or when you talk about um, persuasion and stuff, people talk about it in sales. The, you have the most power when you stop talking mm. as a salesman, when you're willing to walk out of the dealership or you know, disconnect from the sale. Like that's, that's when you have the most power. It's the same with women. So I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to stay, say we're like living together. I'm not going to stay in the house, be in the bed, all this stuff, telling you, beating you over the head, saying you need to marry me. You need to marry me. I need to leave the house and then let you understand what it's like when I'm not there. Come on. Yes. And I don't, that doesn't require me to say anything else yes. to you because yes. I have to have the knowledge and understanding that I have shown you what I can show, and now I'm done doing that. I've given you all the exhibits, exhibit A, B, C, D through Z, that I can show you. It's up to you now to make a decision. So you still have the power to decide for yourself, but again, I get to make the decision on what's required to have access to me. Yeah, and, and either way, to the point earlier, either way, it's a win-win. Because number one, either you weren't as valuable to him as you thought, yep. 
Or number two, he wasn't as adept in evaluating value yeah. like you thought. Exactly. So, so either then way you win. I would have sat there and continued to try to prove something to someone that can't see it. And it's not meaning anything to them. So now in removing myself, I get him a chance to find someone that gives value in a way that he can see. Come on. And then I get to go somewhere where my value will be received, understood, and, you know, evaluated properly. Women don't understand that, though. It's a, a fear that, like, if I'm not there and I leave, he's going to go find he is going to find someone else. But in him finding someone else, that gives him the opportunity to evaluate. So if he chooses her, then did you want him if it was that easy for him to choose her? Or do you not believe in your contribution enough to understand that if you leave, he will miss you? In any case, he got to go and you got to go. Right. Right. Well, and I think what makes it complicated is a lot of us would rather be, let's say, Cam Newton instead of Tom Brady. Tom Brady went in the sixth or seventh round of the NFL draft. He is now the greatest football player of all time. Mm -hmm. He wasn't flash. He wasn't coming out of college with all this hype like a Cam Newton. Yeah. Right? But, you know, we see all the bad bitches on TV, and I just want to be like her. I want to be flew out, this, 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 that. Not realizing a lot of that stuff is not sustainable. So, yeah. like, how do you translate it to the young girls coming up? Because that's what I'm concerned about. I think it's, it's that um, instilling some of those that self-worth and like the confidence thing. I think confidence is so important because based on how you allow people to treat you, it tells a lot about how much you think you're worth. Mm. Um, I think that that's something that you instill in little girls. And I, I think so often we tell little girls like, you're so pretty, you're so cute, you're so, you know, these things. But like, wow, well, like I tell my niece, like you are so smart. You are so funny. You are so like, I tell her those things because and then when you tell, it's so funny because she'll be like, mm-hmm. Like, she knows that. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm smart. It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I am smart. So I think that though, that's the important thing because it translates over time. Because if I understand that I'm all these great things, I'm less likely to put up with anything making me feel like I'm not. So I saw something the other day and it said there's a difference between how you feel about someone and how someone makes you feel. Ooh, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, because I can feel like you're great and I can it's feel yeah. like you're smart and you're all of these things and that you have the ability to treat someone well. But if you don't make me feel like I am also smart and I am also, uh, you know, appreciated and all of these different things, it doesn't matter how much I appreciate you if you don't make me feel appreciated. And sometimes we create narratives in our head and we're like, oh, but we fixate on the, the positive fleeting moments a lot. And we allow it sometimes to overpower the consistent negative things that might be happening or maybe not negative because I always say you can be a good person and still not be a good fit for me. Oh, come on. So you may be great, a great fit for someone else. That doesn't mean that you're a great fit for me. And that doesn't mean that anything is wrong with me necessarily. But you may just not, like you said, timing is such a big thing. You may not be in a space mentally or, you know, physically where you're able to receive or appreciate me. And that's fine. That doesn't make you a bad person. And it doesn't make me unworthy. It just means that we're not a good fit for each other. Absolutely. 